The San Diego Padres ended a season that had championship hopes falling short in the NLDS to the Los Angeles Dodgers. And now they're looking to keep some of these core players that they added this year around for the long term. How's it going, everybody? It's Fame Fryer. Welcome back to another video where today I haven't posted in a very, 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 very long time. You've probably seen me on channels such as The Hog Watch, doing Fryer Focus with Famed, and even guest starring every once in a while. But when news rolls through like this, I can't help but to add my own opinion. San Diego Padres have came out with an article by Kevin AC saying the Padres are interested in extending Jackson Merrill, as we know. Consensus Rookie of the Year at this point. Paul Skeens, tip of the cap, great year from Paul Skeens. Very, very impressed with what the guy has done. I mean, insane. But most people believe Action Jackson is that guy. We got news of the Padres possibly extending him and already talked about an extension before he even made his Major League debut. Let's go and add on to that. Padres also looking at extending Luis Arise. Another huge acquisition that the Padres needed to set the table for that lineup. Is he a guy the Padres want to spend money on long term? That's up for debate in this video. And last but not least, in my opinion, the San Diego Padres ace this year, Michael King. The Padres are looking at extending Michael King. Let's go ahead and talk about what these contracts would look like, if they're worth it, and what I think the San Diego Padres should do. And we are going to start out talking about the first person of the Padres acquired most recent acquisition, Luis Arias. Now, this is someone that the Padres didn't know if he was even going to be on the team next year. Could they non-tender him? His arbitration number was expected to be around $15 million, which, don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of Luis Arias, as I already mentioned. I think he's a great fit on this baseball team and something the San Diego Padres needed to kickstart the offense. But guys, $15 million for a guy that hits singles and can't field is really, really tough. Once again, huge fan of Luis Arias. What I would like to see them do is offer four years, $50 million. I know it's a lot. It's a lot of money. I think if we can try to keep them around 7 to $10 million, that's kind of when $10 million is a little on the high side. But I really predict it's going to be like four years, $50 million for Luis Arias. Now, numbers-wise, what did Luis Arias do this year for the San Diego Padres? He spent most of the season here starting out in Miami just for a bit. The 27-year-old from Venezuela hit 314, had four bombs, 46 RBIs, and had a 739 OPS. I mean, you know what you're getting with Luis Arise. You're getting a guy that's going to foul balls off. He's going to frustrate pitchers. Is he going to hit a home run? Mm, very unlikely. Is he going to spray a couple doubles? Sure, I can give him credit for that. What he can't do is field. He did play very good first base in the NLDS for the San Diego Padres, and I think that was a shock to a lot of people. But Luis Arise is a guy that's, you know, he's, he's one-dimensional. He's very one-dimensional in this San Diego offense. Not saying that's a problem at all, but I'm saying, hey, if we're going to pay this guy, you know, an extension and look into him long term, think about these things. You know, I'm a big fan of, of Luis Arise. Like, once again, I like the way he works for this team. Chemistry-wise, great fit. Everything about him, great fit. But I just, I don't know if I can do it long term. I'm sorry. I love Luis Arise. You can get a first baseman anywhere. I know the Potters have struggled at first base over the years. But, I mean, guys, first basemans come and go so fast. You can find them out of nowhere. It could be a guy that got DFA'd and all of a sudden he hits 35 home runs for you. I'm not saying that's the case with the San Diego Padres. Definitely hasn't felt like that recently. But that's a lot of money, and I really don't want to do it. I really don't, but I do really love Luis Arise. It's a tough situation. I'm going to say no on extending him. I'm going to let him ride it out for one more year. Though That ARB number is very high. It is very, very high, though. Now we're going to go in order here. Now we're going to go ahead and head to the pitcher position. Michael King, the guy that I would consider the ace for the San Diego Padres this year. Man, oh man, what a season King had, especially that wild card start. Seven innings, 12 strikeouts. I think he only allowed four hits off the top of my head. No walks, no hit by pitches. That's never happened that many games with no walks and no hit by pitches in Major League history. He looked like a bona fide ace in that game. Now we fast forward. Game three of the NLDS versus the Dodgers gave up a home run to Mookie. It wasn't that bad of a pitch. I can't really get mad. Just a better swing by Mookie. Sometimes you have to tip your cap. The pitch to Oscar, that was just one bad pitch in my mind. The hits that they gave up before that, little dookie singles, little smack around singles. It happens. It's how baseball goes. But am I mad at Michael King for that start? Absolutely not. Now let's talk about kick. 
2.95 ERA in his first year as a starter. He pitched 173 innings, folks. This is a guy that maybe he was going to get 150 in some people's minds. 201 strikeouts, 1.19 whip. That is certified ace numbers, and if you compare the way he pitched in the postseason to Dylan Cease, you got to feel good about him being the ace of the San Diego Padres. This is a team that's in dire need of some top-end pitching, losing Joe Musgrove. You Darvish pitched insane in the postseason. One of the best postseason performances I've seen between Game 2 and Game 5. Nothing bad I can say there. But in my mind, my fear is this. How much gas does Darvish has in, have in the tank as a top-line starter? Not as much as Michael King, I'll tell you that much. I would love to lock down Michael King long-term. He's only 29. In my mind, it would be something like 5 years, 100 mil. You're going to buy him out of arbitration, just like all the players we're talking about. So these guys are under contract for years to come. But you can lock them down long term right now if you want to. Five years, 100 mil. It's 20 million a year. That's a lot of money. Yes, that is the same contract that we gave to Joe Musgrove. But I'm going to be honest when I say this. And I know it's going to be a hot take to some. But Michael King has a lot more upside than Joe Musgrove. I mean, look at his stuff. His stuff is absolutely disgusting time to time. He has some amazing pitches. I mean, the sweeper has found its way. The sinker is great on the hands. It is an amazing pitch mix. I have nothing bad to say about Michael King. Keep in mind, don't forget how bad this guy started the season. He started the season giving up home runs every start. It looked like a mess, and out of nowhere, he's an ace by the end of the year. What can he do in Season 2 as a starter? That's what I really want to know. In my mind, you sign him. Sign him to that five-year, $100 million contract. You're buying out a year of ARB, whatever. This guy is worth it to keep in San Diego. The Padres need younger upside pitching. Right now, we don't have that. You Darvish is older. Yes, we have Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease only has one more year of control. But for me, I saw a lot of red flags in Dylan Cease in the postseason. I really did. And I'm not feeling that confident in him. Who I am feeling confident in is Michael King. All right, finishing with the longest tenured Padre, the guy that got drafted out of Maryland, our center fielder, Jackson Merrill, hopefully rookie of the year. Padres have looked at extending him since before he made his de debut, a la Jackson Chirillo, out in Milwaukee. This is an interesting situation, though. Very different than a Rising King. As we know, a Rising King have about one more year of arbitration, right? Before they're an unrestricted free agent. Jackson Merrill, guys, this guy is a rookie. He has six more years, five more years of control. Why would the San Diego Padres want to lock him down now? That's an interesting situation. There's a lot of ways to look at this. First of all, you have the Acuna slash Brave style contract, right? Where, you know, they locked down Ronald Acuna for, I believe, 10 years and Albies eight years as soon as after their rookie year. And this is when this has kind of became a thing where, hey, I can give you guaranteed money, which is obviously who doesn't want that? Yes, Jackson Merrill, he'd keep this up, make 350, 400 million by the time he hits free agency. But who knows? There's no guarantee for Jackson Merrill that he can make it that far. And that goes for any baseball player. And this is why this contract's so interesting. I could offer you, you know, eight years, 10 years, 130, 150 million, right? But it's guaranteed money. And that's something that's kind of interesting to a younger baseball player like Jackson Merrill. They got to have interest in it. Now, what I think the San Diego Padres would offer would be somewhere along the lines of eight years, $130 million for the rookie sensation, rookie of the year, hopefully Jackson Merrill. Look at these numbers, guys. 292 batting average, 24 home runs, 90 RBIs, 16 stolen bases, 826 OPS. Keep in mind, he didn't hit home runs at the beginning of the year. He found his groove later. This guy's going to hit 30 home runs next year. He's going to have 100 RBIs. He's going to get moved up in the lineup. He's going to be hitting behind Tatis. He's going to be hitting behind Manny. And people don't want to pitch to those guys. Luis Arias is going to be on base for the San Diego Padres. There's a lot to think about there. Now, like I said, he has about five, six years of control. Would you want to buy that out to get another two years out of him? I don't know. I just, I don't think it's, I think it's smart, but it's also not the smartest move for the Padres right now. I think we should wait a year or two and rediscuss this. You want Jackson Merrill long term. I want him to be a Padre for life. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the guy's getting making 500 grand a year right now. The Padres are in a money crunch for the most part from what we know. So why would we want to force that even more by extending someone that doesn't need to be extended? Arias and King are free agents after this year. We know this. We know that. So that's why I'd be willing to extend them. If you want to keep them on this team, if you believe that they'll be a valuable asset 
for the next four or five years. You don't have that with Jackson Merrill. Jackson Merrill is going to be here for another five, six years, no matter what happens, unless we trade him, which why would we do that? You get the point. There's no reason to trade Jackson Merrill. I would say hold on to the extension talks, keep it in the back of your head, but don't make a move now. It's it, it's unnecessary. You don't want to overdo it, you know? And keep in mind, we have a lot of younger guys coming up. Ethan Salas, DeVries. Would I like to lock those guys up long term? Based off what we know in them in the minor leagues and what they're supposed to be? Absolutely. But at this very moment, they don't need to because they haven't even hit the major leagues. They have six years of major league control, right? So why force this? I would love Jackson Merrill long term. And I mean, saving pennies for an extra two seasons, I don't know if it's worth it. I would rather wait a season or two and do what we did with Fernando Tatis Jr., where you sign him to this humongous, over a decade extension, which Jackson Merrill is more than deserving of at 21 years old. So it would take him until he's 20, till he's 34, right? Sign him 23, 24 oldest. Take him till he's 34. I like that move. That's what I would do if I was a San Diego Padres. But at the end of the day, this is just my opinion about the San Diego Padres. As we know now, Padres are looking at extending Luis Arias, they're looking at extending Michael King, and last but not least, Jackson Merrill, hopefully Rookie of the Year. I would love to see them extend all of them. I would love to see them stay long term. I just hope it's for the right dollar amount. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to try to post more videos. If entertaining stuff like this comes up, I'm definitely going to want to do it. I appreciate everyone watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe. See ya.